Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Marco Dish on the movies. And I finally got around to seeing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The day Marco went, uh, I was sick. And so um, I had to see it another day by myself. So this is what it is here. Uh, it's the tale of two good friends, Leo DiCaprio, who plays a cowboy TV star named Rick Dalton. And his... Uh, uh, stuntman is Cliff Booth and Brad Pitt plays him and he has, so, has a solid reputation due to the fact that he killed his wife and got away with it and Rick Dalton is a I wouldn't call him an aging TV star I get well everybody's aging but he's not exactly old but he seems to be losing his appeal so his popularity has gone down and he begins to feel bad about himself. So they're two good friends and even when Cliff Booth is not being a stuntman, he is playing uh, somebody who Rick Dalton hires to do whatever he wants, like to take him anywhere or fix something in his house, make food, anything. So it takes place in the 60s where everybody smokes cigarettes, which just about drove me nuts. And they drove fast cars that possessed neither seat belts nor airbags because they hadn't been invented yet. Thanks to Ralph Nader, they came into being several years later. Since this is called Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the story takes place during the 60s, like I said, when Sharon Tate, a new beautiful young actress, is married to Roman Polanski. And she is played by Margot Robbie. Um... And Roman Polanski is very well recognized and popular because he had recently made the movie Rosemary's Baby. Up in the Hollywood Hills, they all lived, uh, Sharon Tate and her husband Roman Polanski, next door, although they didn't ever really see each other or know each other, Rick Dalton. <clears throat> And, of course, when you hear the name Sharon Tate, ugly, sad memories come to mind of a cruel bunch of young girls led by Charlie Manson and his murderous buddy Tex go on a murderous rampage and, you know, what happens next. As Quentin Tarantino develops the story, Marco says he writes it all out in book form first. The pacing seems slow, but you just have to compare it to slowly flipping the pages over as you read each one each word savoring every, every bit of story, every little word. At first it left me wondering, well, what was this going to be about? I knew the story of the Sharon Tate and her friend's murder, murders Thank by those goodness. awful, hateful Not Manson really. followers like Squeaky From. And like I said before, the smoking drove me absolutely bonkers. Yeah, when I asked her, what, what, uh, what's your least favorite scene in the movie? Uh, all the smoking. It drove me crazy. But I hung in there because I just wa I was curious as to what was going to happen next. It's so funny when they show those disgusting female Manson followers. At first they act like the happy flower children hippies of the 60s. Enjoying every moment in life, dumpster diving for food, hitchhiking around Hollywood and offering sexual favors to whomever for whatever. There's not a lot of the latter, at least that are, is shown on in the movie. It's just a compilation of their whole innocent looking facade that we see at first. Then they turn sinister if you do something they don't like. And their theories about people in life become twisted and weird and murderous. Another thing is that several little incidents or scenes throughout the movie are actually a foreshadowing to what happens at the end, which is the best I've ever seen and, will, and well worth waiting for. I, I would even like to see the movie again, even though it makes me a little sad and wistful. I have always said that if a movie made you feel something then, that, it, that means it's good, even if the feeling is a sad one where you can only say the words, what if, or only if, to describe the movie. Anybody who lived in that era, I was in middle school, will appreciate the movie soundtrack of a comp compilation of a lot of great old songs like Hungry, 
by Paul Revere and the Raiders. At that time, I didn't have a lot of movie to buy 45s, but nowadays you can just download them to your playlist, which I did. That was exciting. I was around during that time. No, yeah, right. <laughs> B.S. <laughs> also, one song called 1230 by the Mamas and Papas, which played when they showed the Manson followers coming into the canyon. Also, where the Sharon Tate and where the cowboy star lived also showed up in the movie Bad Times at the El Royale. There was another song in the movie that was in Bad Times at the El Royale as well. And I don't and, remember. I don't know which one. I'm not sure. Well, that one was, I really liked that particular and, song. And that's so. the reason why I got Sophie to see this is because, you know, I was regretting not seeing Bad Times at the El Royale in theaters and after I saw the movie and heard those two songs, I was like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity for Soppy to be able to see these songs on the big screen. Well, anyway, the song, the words in the song talk about the girls who come into the canyon every morning. And that's kind of like a, a theme of these people. Because it's all these girls who come from all over California, different parts of the country, who come there and they come into the canyon, you know, and want to be hippies. So anyway, I, I like I said, I really liked it. I would give it a chicken stir fry with fluffy white rice and a fortune cookie, which, which read that today nothing is as bad as it seems. I really liked the movie a lot, even though the ending was very violent. I loved the acting. It was funny to see Leo DiCaprio play a bad actor when he's a very good actor who's adept at playing multiple roles. It was fun to see Brad Pitt in a movie. I've never watched a movie with him. Pitt is from Missouri and a fellow alum of the University of Missouri. He plays someone who's laid back, loyal to his friends, and very strong with good fighting combat moves. In the movie, Rick Dalton mentions that he is a war hero, but that is never explained, nor the part about him murdering his wife. Please see the movie because the end ending is well worthwhile. There's a lot of mystery about the character, and now let's get into spoilers because mystery... I mean, you always get mysteries... Yeah, Sophie. You always get... Yeah, Sophie. Yeah, 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 Sophie. Oh. You... you <laughs> I don't think you should. There's always mystery around these Hollywood stars and these Hollywood people. Like, there's always some sort of little thing or a couple little things about them that you'll never get to know. And, and so that's that's why they did that kind of... And one, one of the things about this movie is that Quentin Tarantino said that this movie is, is the most resemblant to Pulp Fiction. And Safi hasn't seen Pulp Fiction. I have, unfortunately. Yeah. But this this movie is actually, it is like Pulp Fiction. It's like the best parts of Pulp Fiction. And that is like the 10 to 15 minutes of the movie where John Travolta and Samuel L. Jackson are just doing their, their job together. Like if the whole movie had been about them together, then it would have been a lot better. And this movie is, I mean, the whole movie is just about these two guys. And so it, it does remind you of that, except it's better. Well, like Marco said, I never saw that movie, but the way they had their story as good friends and uh, woven into the events of what happened with, well, the Manson uh, murders, or whatever you want to call it, out, or Sharon Tate's murder, how about that, uh, was interesting. And, I mean, it was just like, it says once upon a time, so it's like a specific time period. And, um, in Hollywood. And what was interesting, too, that Brad Pitt was very unassuming. So he just you know, lived his life. He had the beautiful, I didn't mention this in my review, they had a beautiful pit bull, which probably weighed at least 200 pounds. And he taught it all kinds of tricks, and of course that was a foreshadowing to the end. 
ending and uh, it was but it was cool the dog was so well trained and beautiful and strong and amazing and uh, anyway he was so unassuming and it was like completely the opposite of other what they show or say about other Hollywood actors or even anybody in the business he didn't care he just did his job and he was just like a, and he was a good friend to Leo DiCaprio one of my favorite parts of the movie was just him driving home at yeah. night and then him living in that uh, trailer Yeah. behind the drive-in. And I would think nothing, I would have thought something... I, I thought know. he was going to see a movie. Well, that's what I thought. I thought he was sneaking into the movie. You know, and there was a place near, it was a drive-in movie. And they always talk about this and stories about sneaking and somehow to see the movie or sitting on a fence and uh, scary or sitting stories. on the roof of a house. Uh, scary stories. Yeah. And that <laughs> one. And, uh, but he lived back there in a little trailer, which if you watch YouTube, there are tons of people doing that nowadays. And uh, it's really, it's interesting. They're doing it with school buses and trailers and Anything you can think of, and even their cars and vans. They call it van yeah, life. Uh, yeah, yeah. But anyway, it was interesting, and he, it, when he fed his dog, that was something fun to see. That was really, really so good. So, what what do we think about Dakota Fanning from The Alienist, the show that uh, I hated, and then you you kind of liked it, but you you really didn't though. Well, she played. I guess she was playing Squeaky From. And uh, she was really good. She what was had she? an attitude. What was she, Safi? You said she was a... <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if I should say that. But yeah. She was a biatch, <laughs> put it that way. I think I can say that. And, uh, I mean, she really... That's the thing. The, these people... And it, I think it was good to see. Because every so often, even as recently, I think as last week... They talk about giving the parole and letting these uh, girls who were in that murderous group, letting them go because they're old. And, and I think, you oh, know, I, I was sympathetic. But I saw this movie, and I know it's fiction, a uh, fictional story. Well, actually, this movie was... I agree with keeping them in, in jail. Yeah. I, that this movie was a lot more accurate than I thought it was going to be to history. I mean, it it was very authentic, and it was like a true historical movie. Like it didn't need to, like make all these references and all that kind of stuff. It just was in the time period. It didn't need to like force you into that time period. No, it was very natural. And, I thought. And one of the one of the best parts of the movie was the set design. And uh, the wardrobe and the makeup. I mean, everything. Everything was just perfect. And a lot of people knock this movie for the pacing. And the pacing is something you have to get used to. And what I like about it is that the pacing, like, they're not going to speed up the movie just for you. Like, they're not going to speed through something just so that you can get out of there faster. They're gonna kind of like treat it like it's like it's really happening, and like you're really uh, inside these characters' lives, right. instead of just like rushing through them like you do in any other movie. Actually, it's like you've been transported in time yeah. back to that time, because those boots that Sharon Tate was wearing, I had a pair of boots exactly like that. I told this to Marco. Well, she wasn't wearing those boots for long. She put her she put her feet up on the movie theater seats. <laughs> yeah, her, What'd you think? Uh, her filthy bare feet. What'd you think of all the feet, Soppy? They were Did you all like filthy, the feet? especially those filthy followers. Disgusting, what, what your, people. What was your favorite foot? Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if I had a favorite foot, but... Um, you didn't have a favorite foot? Even those moccasins, it's funny how they focused a lot on feet and shoes. Uh, Brad Pitt at the beginning of the movie, because the movie goes later on into the 60s. It starts off in the early 60s, but anyway, Brad Pitt was wearing these moccasins, you'll notice them, because they put the camera on them several times. 
my my friend in uh, a college had a pair of moccasins exactly like that. So it's interesting <laughs> to see those things and hear the music that I used to what love. What did you think about the Bruce Lee scene, the, the, con oh. the quote controversial Bruce Lee scene? What did you think about that? Did well, you like the th it? thing is, Brad Pitt and, well, he, as his character, as a stuntman character, he kind of questions Bruce Lee, who's making this big statement about how wonderful he is or something, and Brad Pitt kind of criticized him and said, I don't know what, I can't remember exactly what he, he said. He didn't really, he just laughed at him. And yeah, he laughed at him, that was. And he jumped on him. And they got, and they said they'd do a friendly fight, but they didn't want to do anything real bad because they didn't want to get in trouble. And also, they're both, Bruce Lee is a star of a series. I guess he was in that. Uh, the Green Hornet. The Green Hornet, which I, I watched. Which, it was a flashback because you remember them talking about Leo was in the Green Hornet as a bad guy. So it oh, did yeah. it did actually happen before the movie started. And, and then Brad Pitt was he was working as a, a double, a stuntman double, and he had his whole like suit on, his like a uh, tuxedo and fake hair to add to his shaggy hair. And uh, so they they're going to do this friendly fight and uh, Brad Pitt, like I said, he has combat skills. I'm wondering if he was like a SEAL, a Navy SEAL or something, or a Green Beret. He had these special, really special, like his own karate type moves. And they did this thing and he whooped Bruce Lee's ass. Well, his family in real life today, they got very upset about that scene. You liked it? Did you like it? And I, I don't think, I, I think that really it's, they should think more about what they're saying because they agreed not to really uh, hurt each other badly. And Bruce Lee probably could have killed uh, the character, the other character, Brad Pitt's character, in two seconds with his lethal. He has some kind of a he had some kind of a lethal kick. Oh, it's a chop. lethal punch. Oh, it's punch. a lethal punch. It's a one-inch punch, and it's it's been studied. And he wouldn't, and he didn't use it when he could have. Yeah. And he didn't. So I think that they, that's more of a tribute, I think, to him and his restraint than, and in the movie than what they're saying. So I think they really should think again about their criticism. And, and so we're trying to speed through this a little bit now. Uh, I, I'm thinking about other segments. I really like the segment with Leo and the, the little girl before they even shoot the scene. How yeah. he's, you know, he's sitting there and, you know, like he's, he's practically getting horribly sick because of all the smoking and then she's sitting there trying to study her lines and he won't be quiet and then she gets interested in what he's reading and he's everything. reading a book and and then they do the scene together and he does a really good job that whole segment i really love that segment because uh it i don't i don't know there's just something about it it, it it had this kind of uh, charming quality to it. Sophie. I agree. What did you think? I thought did it was like really good. Scene? I thought it was a really good scene too. I mean, if you if you just take away the ending, which was really unbelievable, this was a very poignant, uh, good scene with Leo DiCaprio acting. Really did you get well. worried for him when he? When he's when he screwed up his lines and he went back in his trailer and uh. <laughs> well, see, like I said, I had I didn't see any trailer. This movie, I don't really yeah, like did. watching trailer. Well, if I did, I don't I made, remember. It. I made her watch it. I'm not kidding, guys. I made her watch a trailer a week before she saw it. Well, I don't re didn't remember it at all, and uh, I I have so many responsibilities. I cannot remember every little thing, and uh, anyway, he he was considering suicide and he could have because he was really in a bad way but she kind of lifted his spirits and he also lifted his own spirits and because he knew he could do better and he what he did was he went back what he was doing they were doing the scene uh, a scene and he kept messing up his lines and it was like he was disappointed in himself for being so bad because he did practice his lines at home faithfully 
He had it all set up. He did it all the time. And it's it's cool how he practices them. He has like a tape recorder and everything. Yeah, it, that was cool. And uh, anyway, so he makes a real strong effort to go back and redo the scene. And then he did the scene with the little girl and he played them perfectly. And then that lifted his spirits and he kind of got back to his old self after that. And then t two more things, no, uh, three more things actually. Number one, the segment where uh, Cliff goes to to the Spawn Ranch. What did you think about that? Because that that's a lot of people's highlight of the movie because it's so suspenseful. Personally, uh, I really loved uh, Dakota Fanning's acting in it, but Safi really loves something really weird. What what did you love, Safi? What did you love in that sequence? Come on. What have, what have you been talking about every single night, uh, every single day? I don't know. The uh, horseback riding? Well, oh yeah. Well, um... <laughs> every single day. Oh, that guy knew how to ride a horse really well. Well, they talk about, on other movies, they'll, t they'll talk about some actor or actress they've never ridden a horse before. They get in the horse, they do a fair job, but this guy... He's a young actor, very young. He plays Tex, who's actually a horribly murderous person. And I looked the real guy up, the, the Tex, because when I heard Did about... Did they look alike? I don't know. No, not at all, really. Okay. He was blondish, but he looked older, too. But he was in his... I thought he was like an older person, and he got hooked in with Manson and all these girls. But he was actually in his early 20s, which really shocked me. And this guy, he looked like he could be in his early 20s. I'm not sure how old he is because I, where I saw him in, he's a teenager. So what did you think about his but, horseback riding? Well, there were a few things in there. It was very suspenseful, and I thought something bad was going to happen to Brad Pitt. Because, like I said, those girls, they look like, oh, happy-go-lucky hippies, flower children. They love everything about life and like chase butterflies or something. But then when he wanted to see, he had gone out there with uh, the... We don't we don't need to explain that. Just, just well, say what okay, you thought. Well, okay, well, anyway, he, he'd been to the ranch and, and acted. Not acted, but he did a stunt work there for a long time, and he knew the guy who owned it. And he wanted to see him, and he asked the girls, well, I'd like to see that guy, is he there? And so he goes up there, and you could just feel the mood change. And the girls didn't like it. And he went, he got to go in the house, and he thought something, they're going to bash his head in or something. But Squeaky Fromm stayed in there. All the other uh, people left. And I thought, well, is she going to do something bad to him? And he goes back there, and I, I thought he's going to be dead. And he was alive. He was just... Uh, and he was supposed to be played by Burt Reynolds, but yeah. Burt died before he could shoot any scenes. He did rehearsals, I think. And so he, did, he didn't get, get, get to shoot any scenes whatsoever. So, uh, and it really wasn't that big of a part, but it would have been really cool if Burt Reynolds had been the, the owner since he was in all those cowboy movies and everything. But he was played by another fine sense. actor. What's his name, Marco? Bruce Dern. Bruce Dern. Laura Dern's dad. So, anyway, uh, then he leaves. He gets to see the guy. He he uh, wants, He wanted to make sure he was okay. Cause and he, then everything changes after that. Yeah, you could feel the, the girls. Like, they're so mad that he wanted to see that guy and he went to see him. And they look at him like they have daggers, like they're going to do something Well, you, to him. you you look at what the the two girls, the two girls and one guy wanted to do in the, in the, the final sequence. And then you look at, like, oh, how many girls are there at the ranch? Like, what, what could they do to just him? Well, if they all together could have killed him. <laughs> I mean, even if they just beat him with a... a beat him up on their own they all stomped on him they could have all killed him if they wanted to and they were you could just see their you could feel the mood at the scene that they just things just turned ugly and he got out of there everything worked out i won't say what and then else the, happened the final sequence is Safi's favorite sequence it also might might be my my favorite sequence because uh it, it really gives brad pitt a chance to showcase himself 
But it also gets, excuse me, it also gives the, the Manson girls to showcase themselves. Because one of them runs away, and then the other two, I mean, you have that one Susan, and she talks. Susan Adkins, right? And, and she talks about, oh, we should go kill those other guys. And, and you see how really disgusting they are. But, but I love how in this movie they make these people into jokes. I mean, you just you just look at how comically that girl got her head bashed into every single place in the house that that he could find, and and you you think uh, she's she's not a strong opponent at all. She's a wimpy little biatch, and and look what he did to her. And then you have that other girl against the flamethrower. And 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 that and the guy and he gets the bulldog. I mean these people, these I mean oh, the pit bull. And, but you, these people, they're just they're they're losers. And and like it was so cool to see them uh, get killed. Even cooler than in, in Glorious Bastards because in that one it really felt forced. It really felt contrived, and kind of just over exaggerated to the nth scale but this one actually felt very realistic do you have any other words Sophie? no except it kind of makes me sad because I think if they would have had somebody like Brad Pitt those other people would be alive today but they were I think they, no, they I think they sneaked up on him in the middle of the oh, night and they not. were not they weren't like Brad Pitt who could it who uh, had all those uh, combat hand, you know, and if he was smart, and yeah, they you were noticed, just like flaky. You noticed we didn't say people. guns like, oh, Brad Pitt had a gun. No, he had his no, fists. He, yeah, he had his <laughs> fist, and he also had his uh, ability to kind of uh, control distract. his dog. Control uh, the dog, the training of the dog, and also his ability to distract. And lastly, the last thing is. I I, th I think there could be a sequel. Just saying, there there could be a sequel if they wanted to, and so I'll. J but it's probably best that they just l leave it open, and don't ruin it with a, a sequel that might not be as good. But other than that, I really enjoyed the movie. I I, I like it a lot better than Bad Times at the El Royale. What do you think, Sophie? Is it better than Bad Times at the El Royale? Well, I think the thing is, this is more of a complete story. Like you said, he writes it out as a book. So when you're writing a book like that, you've got a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the other one is a little... And even though there's some missing pieces, like... He's a war hero. What war? It has to be at Vietnam, of course. And, nothing, and then the murdering his wife. We don't know anything about that. And so there's a little bit, but it's not really that bad, much of a missing thing. But that's more of a complete story. The El Royale is kind of a similar thing. It's an incident, but it was also years in the making. Remember, the robber, uh, they robbed this bank, and then uh, all these people get killed, and he comes back years later after being in prison. So, you with, know. With bad times at the El Royale, too, you have, you have to take into consideration the surprise factor of that kid. Yeah, near the end turning cool. out because like it wasn't like with Brad Pitt where the whole movie you know that he that he has these talents he's the strongest person in the movie and, yeah. and 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 that's why I'd like to see a sequel is is I would like to see Brad Pitt actually have a worthy opponent or two because in this movie it was more about making him like the the star and everything and just making him outdo everyone I'd, I'd love to see someone else like even stronger than him in like a real battle because the the battles in this in this movie were really good and the, and the best battles of the year and we have to also emphasize this is the only non-superhero movie that we saw this year it's an original movie like I mean I'm not talking about horror movies just other than being a superhero movie this is the only one we've seen this year and it it did everything better than every other superhero movie so far this year what do you think Sophie? oh yeah way better way better than the avengers 
Yeah, there, well, there's just too many characters, and, you know, you can't really, I don't even know if you could do. And you have the agenda stuff no, there that's was in no, that stuff? There was no agenda, because you're talking about no things that happen this. in real history, except for the ending. Sorry. And, uh, unfortunately. And, um, you, the way they dressed, what they listened to, smoking, <laughs> no seat belts, that was all real. A war going on so we better get off now so bye everybody